All right. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us today on this webinar series. So if you guys are joining for the first time on this session, so in this webinar series, uh, Archicad Now webinar series, we are focusing on stair, riling, and curtain wall in Archicad. Okay. So uh, on the previous two sessions, uh, Rima was showing how to do the stairs. Uh, she was uh, showing some tips and tricks, and then some examples, which was quite informative. And then uh, today uh, we're going to see uh, railing uh, and it's going to be the third session on this webinar series. Okay. All right, so the agenda of this webinar series is uh, we will see how to do some modeling uh, tips uh, and we will also see how to do editing uh, the rails, uh, both using the settings dialog and also using the edit mode. And then we will see how to document uh, the riling uh, in uh, 2D, uh, both using the settings dialog and also using the model view options. And then I'll show you some of the tips and tricks. And then after that, we will see some of the examples, which includes HDB railing. Uh, and also we will see canopy using the railing tool. So we will uh, uh, create a canopy uh, and using the railing tool. And then we will also see concealed railing, which means creating grooves inside the wall uh, using the railing tool. Okay, so without any delay, let's uh, jump right in. Okay. All right, so let us see some of the uh, tips and tricks using which we can create a uh, basic railing. So if I see here, I can uh, choose any railing uh, that is available on for me here uh, in this, uh, uh, you know, favorites. So I'm going to choose this metal railing and then I can just click the hotspots here or click any point here. So let me just choose show layer. And then I can simply click on these hotspots to create the railing. Okay, so just double click to end the railing. Okay, so similarly, uh, you can do for the other railings as well. So if in case you are using, uh, you know, uh, with the railing tool and then creating the rails above the uh, components uh, like slab or uh, you know stair whatever it is uh, you need to be very careful about one of the uh, parameters here which is this associativity uh, parameter so you need to have both of these associative when you uh, you know uh, draw railings over these components say for example if i select this one right so you can see these are static because uh, these will not be uh, you know associated to any particular element so while selecting and drawing the railing tool here so i need to be careful and then i need to make it associative so when i just hover my uh, you know mouse over these elements it will turn blue and get highlighted so i can just start uh, you know uh, uh, clicking on the points so if I try to click in between anywhere, it will not highlight, which which means that it, it will become static. Okay, so if I go to the end point, you can see I can just click and then I can create railing. Okay, so just double click at the end so that it will uh, end the uh, railing tool. Okay, so if in case I want to see this in 3D, let me just choose show all. Okay, so if I change this. Okay, so you can see that if I change this uh, by editing the slab here, say for example, if I select the slab and then I choose the uh, slabs reference line, and then if I try to edit it, okay so you can see that the railing moves along with it okay so let's try to do the same on this one okay i can just use my uh, pickup parameters from here and then i can just uh, start using uh, my railing tool okay so i'm clicking on this corner and uh, i can just click on this corner or i can go directly here you can see that it is choosing the uh, path by itself and then it is highlighting on the screen. Okay, so I can just click uh, here to just go with it. 
and then double click if you want to stop it there okay so you can see here i can just use this uh, and then even if i make it curved or something uh, it will just follow the uh, associative element uh, profile itself okay okay so similarly um i just wanted to show something just coming here you can simply select the railing tool okay and then choose the uh, railing favorite and then i'm going to start from here okay so let me choose the layer and then i can just click here you can see it automatically gets curved here as well okay and if you click this way it again clicks this okay so if uh, if in case you want to choose the other side right say for example if you are uh, uh, starting from here the railing okay so if you're starting from here and if i want to go to this side but if in case you want to follow the other side, just click tab here. So it will automatically switch to the other side. So you can see the preview automatically switching to the other side when you press tab. Okay. So once when you confirm, just double click and then it will create the rail there. Okay. So now you can see that the rail is, uh, railing is outside my slab. So in order to flip it, you can just right click and then flip railing on reference line. Okay. So it will just flip inside okay so that is about railing all right so next is railing in stairs so now uh, we saw how to create railing on slab now we shall create rail on stairs so here i'm just going to use this railing and then when i hover my mouse over the uh, stair you will also see the blue reference line okay so i can just click on that and then I can click the top edge. So it will automatically follow the uh, stairs, uh, profile stairs path, and then it will just create the railing for me, okay? And again, if you see here, I need to flip the railing. So there is one option, you can just uh, simply press P on your uh, keyboard, it will flip, okay? So you can right click and flip using this flip railing on reference line, or you can just press P, okay? So let's see next option. So whenever you're creating a stair tool, right? Uh, whenever you're creating a stair, you can create a railing along with it, okay? So for that, uh, let me just use this stair. And then I'm just going to uh, turn on this place left, right, uh, and right uh, railing. So if in case you want to have on only one side, you can just turn on uh, the, that particular side and turn off the other side. So in this case, I'm just turning on both the sides and then I'm just going to uh, start modeling. Okay, so just double click it. You will see that the railing has been created. So now if you see here, I just wanted to flip both my uh, railings. I just choose and then click flip. Okay. All right, so the next one is this stair where I can just use uh, either the reference line method where I can choose here and then choose the opposite end so that it will automatically select the profile of the stair and then it will create the railing. So when you double click, it will create the railing. Here I just want to flip it, right click and flip. All right, once you do that, uh, in this side, I want to use my magic wand option. So just pick up parameters. And then if you see, when I hover over this edge of the stair, you can see the magic wand highlighting the uh, rails on my stair. Okay, so I can just uh, place the railing there. So the magic wand, uh, you can use the space bar and then it will highlight the uh, railing profile, the railing path for you uh, based on the selection that you hover uh, on the screen. Okay, all right. So here in this case, um, I want to continue the railing after I have placed the railing for the stairs along this uh, slab. So for that, you can just select the first point here 
the reference point and then you can just select the other end of the reference point of your uh, stair and then after that without double clicking just single click you can just continue to uh, click the other point you can see that the slab gets highlighted here which means that it is creating an associative railing okay so just double click at the end you will have the railing created in, uh, for yourself okay so now even if you want to edit the slab okay so if in case you want to edit the slab you can just edit it the railing will follow the same path okay so this is how you can create railing inside your um, uh, railing for stair okay so the next one is uh, railing settings base 6 so if you see under the settings of the railing you will have a segment you will have top rails handrails uh, rails inner posts balusters panels and so on and then uh, apart from that we will have posts connections and uh, ends so for all these uh, types that we have inside the uh, settings we will have extensive settings for each of these tools say for example for top rail you can choose the top rail and then you can just customize it to any extent uh, using the options that we have here so similarly you see here for handrails we have and then for rails we have so for all of these tools so we have extensive settings using which you can customize your um, railing and then create it inside your model okay so let's see some of them and then uh, see how we can edit uh, using the uh, you know settings dialog here okay so here are some of the rails uh, railings that has been created so if i go here and then select any of these and then go to the settings dialog here so you can see all the individual uh, subtypes of all the uh, railing elements so these are the subtypes so if i go to the segment you can see uh, if i just hover over the elements here you'll be able to see its name highlighting so handrail we have balusters we have rails okay uh, so if i click uh, each or each of the tab here it will highlight in uh, green and then you will be able to see the corresponding settings here so for this handrail you can see we are using uh, rail 25 so you can also use profiled rails as well so if in case you are using profiled rail so you will be given an option to choose the uh, profile say for example if you see here uh, if i use any of these uh, based on the profiles material you will have you will be able to see the material here and then you can customize the height and then if you want the uh, uh, you know the handrail to be on bo both sides you can choose this option or if you want to have it on just left side or on right side only you can choose these options let me just choose both sides for now and then if i go further we have uh, fixing details which we can just customize and then create fixing as required so you can see here we have options for that okay and uh, the distribution of the fixings you can choose from the options here uh, the 2d representation of your uh, uh, handrails so you can make it like this or just show only the axis or show both axis and then the floor uh, you know um, the projection okay and then the 3d representation if in case you want to change the representation here you can change them as well okay so let me just click ok here and then you can see uh, you can see the handrails both sides along with the profile that i just chosen okay so let me go back to the settings to see further okay similarly we have rails uh, we have inner posts uh, say for example for the inner post if i want to use any uh, you know profile post i can use it from here okay uh, so we have other options as well or we can just turn it off say if in case i don't want to see the inner post right so i can just make it none so it will just turn off the inner post for me Okay, so you can see here there's not uh, inner post but if in case you want to totally delete it so you can just select that and then you can click the minus sign here okay so you can click the minus sign here so just click okay so you can see the inner post is totally deleted it's not turned off it's totally deleted okay so going back here uh, let me just add the inner post here so for adding just click the plus sign here so i can just click 
and then uh, you know uh, choose the location here so based on the location that i chose you will have the value here from the previous inner post say for example if i make it 1500 and then if i want to add one more inner post right so i can just add in between here and then make it like 750 okay so now i have two sets of balusters so instead of one of the set of sets uh, i just want to make it panel so just delete it so for deleting it just use the minus sign after selecting it and then i can just place a panel there so after selecting the panel i can just click the plus sign and then i can see uh, place the panel so for the panel again we have uh, more options so i'm using this railing panel 25 and then if you see here under here we have custom settings where you can define the fixings uh, 2d representation and then the 3d representation as well so for the frame uh, you can choose the frame based on the options that we have here so you can see here these are the frame and then fixing options so let me just click ok with this and then see how it looks in the 3d so you can see here i'm having uh, two sets of you know uh, uh, balusters one is baluster and then the other one is the panel so you can create a creative uh, pattern like this for your railing and then you can model it okay all right so here is one uh, other type of panels uh, creating the uh, panels with the railing tool so you can see here we have only panels and for the panels you can customize the settings here and all that okay so the next one that i want to show here is the post so at the end we will have post so even for the post we can choose from here whichever type you want and then you can customize the settings based on that okay and for the connections if you go uh, you can choose from here the options that we have the we have top rail uh, handrail one and handrail two connections and then the rails okay so uh, if if in case you choose the top rail you will be able to customize the top rail connection uh, between the two segments okay so later i'll show you what is the segment inside uh, uh, railing and then how the connection between the segments work okay so uh, for the end so you can choose top rail and then you can choose uh, the options from here and then customize the end of the uh, rail uh, end of the top rail or the handrails okay so based on the option that you choose you'll be able to get uh, the values from here so if I choose this and click OK, see the top rail. Okay, so you can see here it gets turned uh, and then it goes down. Okay. All right, the next one is this. And then if in case you want to change the, uh, you know, uh, inner post, right? So here I'm going to change it to revolved posts here. So earlier we were seeing the profiled post. So now there is one option for revolved post. So when you select the revolved post, you can select. Uh, so you can select the options from here and then you can select the re revolved profile here. So using your profile manager you can create a profile uh, which can be used to uh, revolve and then you have multiple other options here which can be customized to uh, represent the post uh, in the way you want okay so let me just click ok with the default settings that we have here and see how it looks in 3d so you can see here this is how it looks in 3d so you can just go here and then under the profile manager you can see here uh, we have a uh, revolve post. Let me just check the name. Okay, so it's railing revolve profile. Okay. So if I go here, we have uh, railing revolve profile. So if I click edit, you'll be able to see the profile of it. Okay, so this is how it is revolved, and then it has been created as a uh, post inside the rail. All right, so let's go to the next topic, which is the adjusting the post. So if you see here um, in this uh, stair, we have created the railing, but these railing posts, inner railings are at random locations. So if in case you want to make them uniform uh, on the uh, tread, what you can do is you need to know the uh, width of the tread. 
So for that, I'm just selecting the uh, stair and then I just wanted to know what is the width. So here you can see it is 300 mm, okay? So now I wanted to place all the uh, inner posts at multiples of 300, like, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, in multiples of 300, which is like 300, 900 or 600 and so on. Okay, so let's just select the railing and then uh, select the inner post. And then you can see this is where you can just choose the distance from previous. So I want to make this multiples of 300. So I'm just making it 900. Okay, and then just click OK. Let's see how it looks in 3D. So you can see here, everything is at the tip of the uh, thread. So in order to adjust this, uh, so there is one option here inside the settings. So we can go to the node and then you can see ending node offset so you can offset the ending node so let's say for example if i give 50 mm here so you can see everything got offset of 50 mm and it looks nice uh, and it looks as uh, as we expected okay so this is how we can adjust the post uh, using the settings dialog okay so let's see um, how to edit the post or edit any component here using the edit mode okay so whenever you select the uh, railing, you'll be able to see this edit uh, option on 3D. So when I select this, uh, we have a lot of options here. Uh, if you just want to see the top rail, you can just turn it on and then uh, turn off the other things, okay? So if you just uh, right click in any of these, say for example, if I right click in uh, handrails, so I'll be just seeing only the handrails, okay? So if you left click, you can just turn it on uh, as expected and then if you want to see the environment as well uh, if in case for like any measurement or anything uh, you can just turn on the environment okay so let me just uh, exit here but before that you can see here i can just go to the railing settings from here itself it will just go to the overall settings of the railing okay but if in case you select any of the individual uh, element here right say for example i'm choosing this uh, handrail so i can just go to this handrail setting itself Okay, so this is just the handrail setting of this particular one. So if in case I want to edit it, so for example, if I want to make it like this and then make it 100. Okay, so let's just click OK. So you can see here, it gets editing, edited. So without changing the overall settings, I'm just, uh, you can see here, without changing the overall settings, I'm just changing the uh, end uh, node of this particular uh, handrail. Okay. So let me just exit the edit mode. So if in case you, I want to continue the railing, right? So just select the railing and then I just click the end point of it. So when I click the end point on the pet palette, you'll be able to see continue railing, okay? So I'm just using the continue railing to continue it until the end of this thread, okay? So just double click it. It will just continue and create the railing for you. Okay. So now uh, you can just select and then go to the edit mode. And if in case I want to, uh, you know, delete this post, right? So you can just select this particular post and then click delete. So now if I go to the exit and then you can see there is no post there, okay? So uh, let me go back to the edit mode and then uh, just select this segment. So if you see here, uh, if I just right click here, so you can see segments here. So this is one segment, which I told earlier, and then this is one more segment. So for each segment, you can just go to the uh, dialog box here, and then you can just modify the uh, top rail or hand rail, inner post balloon. Posters and panels and so on. So uh, you can do that. So for me, uh, I just see uh, segments. I want to see the other elements. Okay, so now I want to adjust the, um, you know, uh, railings here or the balusters here, and then I don't want to show any gap here. So for that, I can just select this one. Okay. And then I can just move it. Okay, you can see here it is getting moved. I can just move it to the extent that I want, and then just click exit. Okay, you can see here I have deleted the post and then instead I have created or I have uh, edited it manually in uh, edit mode and then I have created the balusters continuous like this. Okay, 
so you can do something like this using the edit mode okay all right so the next tips that i want to show here with uh, uh archicad with the railing tool is whenever you create a uh, you know railing right so if you select it and if the node is uh, showing uh, round right so if the node is round it no it shows that it is an associative node okay it shows that it is an associative node and if there is nothing there it means that it is automatic which means that i have created this particular railing by starting from here and then ending here it automatically chose the path by itself so in that case it will not have any uh, node here and then if it is static it will be square in shape okay, for example for this one right so this one all the nodes are square in shape because it is all static nodes okay so just by looking at the node you'll be able to uh, find out whether it is associative or static or automatic okay so the next is uh, documentation okay so for documentations we have two options we can just use the settings dialog itself or we can use the uh, model view options to do the documentation of the uh, railing okay so if you see here uh, for each of the uh, railing tool we have documentation options but if you select from the railing on the top you have floor plan display layouts we have floor plan symbol components uh, floor plan symbol overrides and uh, break mark settings so if in case you are associating it with the stair right so you can see here you can use break mark associated uh, to the stair okay and for model view options we have options that using which you can customize the uh, settings here okay so let's see that so here if i go to the floor plan so currently all of this are uh, showing by model view option so let me just select all of them and then go here and then if i uh, turn off by model view options and then click ok so you can see each of the stair uh, though they all look similar in 3d let me go to 3d and show okay so they all look similar in 3d but i will be able to customize them in 2d and then represent them differently okay so using the setting dialog so for that select one and then you can see here how it has been represented so here i'm just seeing the top rail and if i go to the top rail here and under the 2d representation i can uh, select how i want it in the 2d so as, as i told earlier you can see the projection along with the axis or just the projection or just only the axis so in this case i'm just selecting the axis and that is why i'm able to see only the axis along with its break line okay so similarly in this case if i so see here so if i go to the railing you can see i'm seeing the top rail inner posts and posts only so i'm not seeing the other components okay so let me just click okay here uh, so before that you can see uh, the break mark options here so we have the break mark options uh, Currently, it is not associated with any of the stairs, so that's why it is grayed out. But if in case it is associated, you'll be able to use this. All right, so here I can just choose custom height, and then I can just choose any height that I want. Say, for example, if I want to make it like 1800, and then this one to be like 1900 with 100 mm gap, I can just click OK. So you can see here it just moved above. Okay, so you can just customize the break lines also uh, manually okay so these are other two options so if you see here i'm showing everything in this option so everything is shown here and then you'll be able to see all of that in 2d uh, based on the representation of each of these uh, sub elements okay so if you want to just control all of this by using the model view options so well, let me just go to this view and then let me select all of this and then turn on the by model view options so if i turn on that you can see all of them getting grayed out uh, so everything every representation will be based on model view options so let me just click ok here so you can see here irrespective of all that uh, representations uh, it just comes from the model view options so if i go to the model view options here you can see the railing options okay so you can have full uh, simplified or schematic so let me see here so if it is full it is like this and if it is uh, simplified you can see all of them are having the simplified representation and then if it is schematic you can see only the uh, axis of it okay so in this case 
I think I just go here and then go my go to the top rail and then change it to access. So even that becomes access. Okay. So using this model view option, you can globally control the uh, representation of all these rails in this particular view and then save it with the view itself. Okay. So similarly, if I go to 3D view, so I have my uh, uh, stair and then the railing here. Currently, it is showing full, so I'm able to see everything, uh, all detail of it. So if in case I change this to schematic, right? So you can see it's just source a schematic representation of the uh, model. So this particular uh, uh, option can be used in case if your model is very heavy, you can when you're working. So when your model is fluid, you can just use the schematic representation. And also when you're uh, you know displaying your design ideas to your colleagues or to your clients. So if in case you want don't want to get the focus on this particular element, you can just make it schematic so that you can focus on the details of the other elements and then you can uh, do the presentation. Okay, so in that case, it is very uh, helpful. So let's see how to represent this in uh, using the model view options. Going to the model view options. So if you see here, uh, you can just make it schematic in 3D view. And then if I go to the attributes, you can select the uh, uh, surface uh, override for that particular uh, element. And then you can choose the pen type and then the uh, line type here. Okay, so you can choose the pen and the line type. So based on that, it will be represented in 3D. All right, so let's just go to the next topic, which is the railing and roofs. So uh, earlier we saw how to do the railing in slab and then on, uh, uh, you know, uh, stair. Now we can also do the railing in roof. So you can see here, I've created this ramp using the roof tool. And then now if we see, I can just select the metal railing here and then choose the layer. And then if I hover over here, as I told earlier, I'll be able to, uh, you know, highlight the element to which it is getting associated. So now if I go here and then if I click on this point, so it is highlighting only this one and in between it's not highlighting any of the component. Okay, so if I just double click, you can see here it is not associated to these points okay so only if the element is continuous it will be associated else it will not be associated so in that case you need to select manually the uh, the nodes so you can see here you can select here I'm just manually selecting the nodes and it need to get uh, highlighted. So the components below should be highlighted else it will not be associated. So in this case, uh, I can just select this and just make it curved. Okay, so the railing also is associated with that. Okay, so for flip flipping, I can just use clip P. So it will just get flipped inside. Okay, so this is how you can um, you know, create the railing on the uh, roofs as well. Okay, so let's go to the next example, which is the HDB railing. Okay, so for creating that, I've created a favorite of my HDB railing. So let's just have a look at that. So here it is, just double click, and then I'm just opening the settings of it. So here, if you see, I have a top rail, and then we have balusters, and then here we have our rail, and then below that we have curb. So we are using the rail to create the curb as well. Okay, so for all this, I have different settings here. Say for example, if I'm using a baluster, I'm using this option for distributing my balusters here, which is like 100 mm. Uh, so it will equally distribute uh, based on the length that we have. And then we have options for offsetting on top and then on the uh, left and right and all, uh, all. okay. So similarly, we have settings here. We can choose the uh, balusters, uh, you know, post that you want to use. So make sure you're not using the built-in post. Always try to use the uh, railing post or profile posts. Okay, so here I'm using the railing post. So based on this, you can see I have different options using which I can just customize the sizes and then the type that I want to use. So if I go further, you have 3D representation. Okay, so you can change this to square and then the 3D and so on, okay? 
Okay, so let me just click OK here, and then I'm going to use my magic wand to create this railing here. So if I use the magic wand by pressing my space bar, so you can see it is getting highlighted. So just click there, it will create the uh, railing there. Okay. Uh, it is not so perfect. So we are going to edit mode and then we are going to do some edit um, Okay, so but before that I just wanted to explain you guys that uh, There are two portions here or there are two types of segments here One is the slope segment and then the other one is the horizontal segment Okay, so for each of these segments we need to have different types of curves Okay, so for that if you see here I can show the sample that I have here. So this one I'm going to use it for the slopes and this one for the curves uh, Sorry, the horizontal uh, curve. This one is the sloped curve. Okay, so if uh, Later I will show you how to uh, you know uh, change the curves for different types of segments So but before that let's go here and then let's go to edit Okay, so now I just want to see the segments. So just right click here I'm seeing only the segments. So when I select this particular segment, you can see it is selecting this one along with the horizontal one. So in order to split them, just right click here and then create independent segment and nodes. So this will split them uh, here. Okay. So similarly, in this side, uh, this one and then the sloped one are uh, same. So I just right click and then create independent segments and nodes. Okay. All right, so now uh, I'm more or less done. So if you don't want to see the environment, you can just turn off the environment and just click the uh, slope segment here. So I'm selecting only the slope segments. And then if you go to the uh, settings here under the rails, I'm going to the uh, favorites and then I'm going to use this sloped or uh, concrete curb uh, favorite here. So just double click that. And then you'll be able to see the settings of it here and then click OK. Okay, so for the rest, which is the horizontal one, just select the segments and then go here to the settings and then go to the favorites and then just double click this to do the settings. Okay, so now I'm just clicking uh, exit edit mode and then you'll be able to see. Uh, you can see here uh, the connections here are uh, good enough. Okay. All right. So let's see how to uh, extend the ends here. So let's just click edit. All right. So, uh, you can just select it and then you can just select the reference line here and then click the end point. Uh, you will have options here to continue the railing. Okay. So let me just continue the railing here. So I just want to extend it by 300 mm or I can just make a random value and then I can just uh, make it smaller. So just double click here so you can see it got extended here. Okay, so if in case you want to just make it smaller. Just use this uh, move node and then I just go here. Very near to that and then I have just created this. Now if I want to just edit or delete one of the posts here. Just select that, go to the edit mode and then delete. Okay. All right, so now it good, looks good. Uh, let me go to the top. All right, so similarly, just select the reference line, the end point, and then you can use the continue uh, railing. And then I'm going to continue the railing. Just select the path here. And then I just want to turn it to there and then just double click there at the end. Okay, so now you can see I've created this, uh, which is more or less good enough. Now, the only thing that I want to do is the solid element operation. So, if you see here, the curb and then the uh, you know uh, stair are uh, intersecting or overlapping each other. So, I'm just going to do the solid element operation. So, right click, connect, solid element operation. Okay, so you can see here it is automatically added to the target. So the railing is added to the target. So now I wanted to add the uh, stair and this lab as well. Okay, so just select both of them and then add as the operators. Okay, so you'll be able to select uh, using this option here. So I'm just selecting the target and then the operators using the option. And then 
I can use subtraction with downward extrusion because uh, in this case you can see here this particular place is coming outside so I cannot just use the subtraction I need to use subtraction with down, downward extrusion okay so use one attributes and then click execute so you can see here the railing is nicely uh, you know cut with the railing uh, stair okay so now let me just create the above one and then see how to connect it with this one okay so for that i just go and use the same uh, hdb railing favorite and then i'm going to use the magic band here and then i'm just going to place it so you can see here i'm using the magic band i'm not going to focus on the other part i'm just going to focus only on the connection part here so let me just uh, extend it using the same method uh, the continue railing so here I can just click the end point here and then the end point there and then I want to bring it up until the other end. Okay, so just double click at the other end. Uh, it will just stop uh, the uh, continue railing operation. So now I need to clean up the connection. So select the first one, the bottom one and then go to edit. So now I want to delete the extra portion here. So you can just select them and then you can just delete them. So you can see here I've deleted the extra portion and then just exit the edit mode. So similarly, I can do the same for the above railing. Go to the edit mode and then I want to delete the intersecting portion. Select the elements individually and then you'll be able to delete all of them. Now, if you see the connection is perfect. So when you select this, you can see here, both the railings get connected very perfectly. Okay, so this is how we can create uh, railings for HDBs. All right, so let me just close here. Okay, so if you see them in the floor plan, so you can see here the railing based on the uh, floor plan display that we have inside the settings you'll be able to see the floor plan of it. So the next one is I want to create canopy using the railing tool. So, but before that, let me just create it uh, here. So if you see, I've created a, a canopy um, favorite as well. So let's just double click and then you, uh, I can just start drawing it. Okay, so if you want to draw something like this, So you can see the canopy is created. So here, what I'm doing is, let me just go to the settings dialog and then show you. So I have this top rail, which is a profile rail, and then I'm using the profile which I've created for canopy. Okay, so later I'll show you this profile. And then for posts, uh, I also have the inner post. So I'm using this uh, square or the uh, hollow square one, and then I'm using the creating the post as well. Okay, so this is very simple. Uh, just by manipulating the uh, sub elements here, we can just create something like this. And then under the cal uh, classification, uh, it should not be railing. Uh, you need to change accordingly the classification uh, so that when you export it in IFC or something, it will just work, work accordingly. Okay. So let's see the uh, profile that I just created for this. Okay, go to the element attributes and then you can see the profile manager. So under here, I can see the canopy and then just click edit. So you can see here, I've created a profile something like this. Okay, so it has a slope. Um, so that's how it is created. Okay, so let me go back to 3D. So just in case, if I want to create this type of canopy on the uh, mesh or on the topography, right? So I can create that, uh, but before that, I need to have a path of that, okay? So for the path, I'm just going back to the floor plan, okay? So here, if you see, I have the uh, mesh or the topography, and I'm going to create the path using my polyline tool, okay? So you can just create or you can use spline as well. So let me just use the spline here. Okay, so just select the uh, 
mesh and then select the mesh tool here okay and then use the magic wand i can fit this path to the ridge okay so use uh, fit to user ridges and then click okay now let me just delete the polyline and then if i just use the same uh, railing and then click my magic wand uh, on this particular part that we just created it will create the canopy and then let me go back to 3d so you can see here it will automatically create the canopy based on the part that we have chosen okay but if in case you are creating it manually right so if you in case you are creating it manually so if you click here and then if you click somewhere there so it will not have it will not follow the path it will just be having you know you can see here there is a gap but this one it was uh, just following the slope along with the path okay all right so the last one is the concealed ceiling uh, concealed railing example so here i'm going to create a groove uh, so for creating that groove again i'm going to use the uh, profile so let me just show the profile that i just created okay so here it is let me just click edit so you can see here this is the profile that i've created for the uh, concealed railing and uh, you need to make sure that you need to have the airspace void here okay so the fill type is airspace void which is the material of this void uh, was of this profile and then if i go to this uh, particular building material i need to have the maximum priority index for this uh, particular element so that it will just take over uh, the any other material and then it will create a void there okay so this is airspace void and then if you see here i'm using the surface air and then the uh, fill as well as our space. Okay, so let me just click okay. And then if I go to the 3D and uh, let me create the uh, railing for it. So I have created a, uh, you know, favorite for that as well. But before that, let me choose the uh, layer. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so now I'm going to use just the magic wand to create the um, railing for this particular stair. So you can see here the uh, railing is created, you know, okay, so the railing has been already created based on the profile that we have. So I'm going to perform the solid element operation to create the groove on the walls here. Okay, so now let's just right click, select the uh, railing and then right click here and then go to connect solid element operation okay so i have already added the target uh, sorry uh, the target should be the uh, you know walls here okay so i'm just selecting them so these should be the targets because i'm going to create grooves on these walls first okay so let me just click these so i've created five and then i've clicked that um and then now the operator should be the railing okay okay so just select the railing and add it as an operator so i'm just using the operation subtract subtraction and then use own attributes and then just execute okay so let once after it is executed you can see there is the groove created here based on the profile that we have created okay so you can see them here okay so if i select the wall uh, the attributes are coming from the uh, override here so i'm here using this override uh, for this uh, edge surface so based on that i'm getting the material surface here okay all right so that's all for today uh, i hope you guys find it informative let me go back to the presentation so uh, we have uh, uh, you know um, uh, training for the stair and railing on our learn portal so you can just scan this qr code and then you'll be able to take up the training so if you have uh, ssa so you can just use the coupon code and then uh, you know get this training for free so uh, do follow us on all our social medias for more information um, so uh, we also have a youtube page uh, where we will upload all the training and uh, recording, sorry, the uh, webinar recordings. 
So you'll be able to watch all those and then get uh, information about all this there as well. Okay.